Hi, this is Michael Uslin. You're listening to Batman on Film. The Adventures of Batman. Welcoming you to the new adventures of Batman. Welcome to episode number three of Batman Animation, a Batman on Film podcast revisiting the animated adventures of the Caped Crusader. I am senior BOF contributor Ryan Lauer, and with me is the head honcho, the gumbo guru himself, editor in chief of BOF, Bill Jet Ramey. Bill, how are you? I'm good. Good. How are you? Okay. Swell. Um, Had a couple of Scooby snacks this morning, so. <laughs> They're the they're the hot the ones that you know they're they're high in protein. Yeah, I'm ready to podcast. I'm ready to talk Batman. Ready to yeah, talk, whatever talk it takes. Scooby Doo, two twenty, two twenty one, whatever it takes. <laughs> whatever it takes. Uh, you had your Scooby snacks. I had a uh, I don't know what's a Scooby Shaggy special like a fifteen patty cheeseburger. Yeah, you know, um, loaded with everything. Also, every every cereal in between the buns on okay. top of us. So. Yeah, it's my my Saturday morning um, breakfast of choice. That's yeah. Uh, watching that's, this back in the day, that's the way to go, <laughs> right there for sure. Um, some, uh, what do you get? Cocoa puffs, uh, Frankenberry. You know, people um, always ask Count Chocula. They, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now it's his season. Count Chocula, Frankenberry, Booberry. Um, I, I am asked a lot of of you know what kind of what cereal is your favorite? And I'm like, actually, I like them all. Well, you know, like the the healthy stuff, and so I was like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Not that." All <laughs> the stuff that you feed like a five year old, that's my favorite uh, kind of cereal. So okay, okay. Many many of mornings, uh, sit in front of the TV watching Scooby Doo eating yeah. all that unhealthy cereal. So, the episode we're going to talk about today is from a um, a very short lived TV series. It's not a Batman starring series, but um, we kind of went a little deep with the episode. It was Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, and the episode is called What a Night for a Dark Night. So it's, it's like the Batman! This episode was a lot of fun. Um, you and I, when we were talking about the Batman animation, we'd uh, you talked about your affinity for Batman Brave and the Bold, and... Mm-hmm the the movie the scooby-doo and batman the brave and the bold Mm -hmm. and i remember i i I think i brought it up to you and said oh my gosh have you seen this episode scooby-doo and guess who series right now is on hbo max um i don't know how i even stumbled across it because it was dropped in 2019 but it was such a weird it was on boomerang's uh video on demand channel or something like that might have popped up on netflix and then launched on hbo max so it's kind of a miss and i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people didn't even know it existed, but I said, Oh, Bill, I think it's a blast. This would be a good one to talk on Batman animation because Batman's the guest star, he's pretty important to the entire 22 minute episode. Um, and I and I think it's a it gives me nothing but like Brave and the Bold vibes. And this was your first time watching it, right? Yes, yeah. yes, okay. So you said you have a lot to say on it. What do you think? It reminded me of lots of things, but like the whole premise, I guess, of the series is kind of like a reboot of when I was a kid. Okay, I'm dating myself, but (laughs) I watched Scooby-Doo first Mm -hmm. run, you know, the original. Oh. Saturday mornings. When Saturday morning cartoons were a big deal, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not a big deal anymore. Mm -mm. Um. I mean, uh, so then they came out with, in the early 70s, around 73, probably, I want to say, I'm close. They had uh, the Scooby-Doo Mysteries. Oh, no, no, no. Scooby-Doo Movies. Scooby-Doo okay. Movies. That was the it, that was another incarnation of Scooby-Doo. And it was the same thing. They would have guest stars, right? Mm-hmm. And so I know that 
Warner Brothers home videos released the Scooby Doo and Batman movie. Mm -hmm. That that was that that movie, quote unquote, is um, that those two episodes from back in the day from the Scooby Doo movies. I mean, they had like, like Laurel and Hardy and the Three Stooges and you know Phyllis Diller. I mean, guest starring. So it was the same premise. You'd have a mm -hmm. guest star. So <clears throat> that one, even though I believe it's Owen Sewell and Casey Kasem voicing Batman and Robin, it's kind of a, um, it, it's supposed to be the animated version of Adam West and Burt Ward. So I'm gotten to thinking, okay, so we've had kind of sort of Scooby-Doo and the gang with, Adam West and Burt Ward in animation. We've had Scooby-Doo with Batman Brave and the Bold, of course, the movie, mm -hmm. which we'll talk, we got to talk about that movie on this series. Oh yeah. Definitely. This podcast someday. And then now we have this. So Scooby-Doo and the gang has crossed over into many different versions or th at least three different versions of Batman. This one, and from this this episode, reminded me of, it reminded me of Brave and the Bold. It also reminded me aesthetically a little bit of from the Bat, the, the Batman animated series, like mm -hmm. in the early 2000, 2000s, um, especially the look when Batman's standing to the, on the, you know, you get a profile view of, of yeah. Batman, very much like. He, what he looked like in I see um, that and the Batman animated series so yeah so I'm thinking are there different Scooby doing the gangs in different multiverses or does the Scooby and the gang just cross over into any multiverse they want to meet different versions of Batman I'm getting really really deep here with nonsense actually this the Scooby Doo multiverse um it's kind of great because I think a pairing, I just, so I actually haven't watched those old, the Scooby-Doo meets Batman, mm -hmm. you know, episodes that you mentioned, even though they're right there on the disc as extras for the Scooby-Doo and Batman Brave and the Bold movie. Um, but it just, it does feel like a pairing that could just work. So as like you're, you're mentioning it, I think you totally can do a mashup of, you know, basically what they what they're doing. So this episode felt very first iteration Scooby Doo. Just updated animation, but I think it felt mm -hmm. very similar to oh, it's, that um, old show. Classic yeah. Scooby Doo, where are you? Straight up. Yeah. Um, which is the best Scooby Doo. And I think that you can have him popping up and meeting every version of this animated Batman. And I think it would work. Mm -hmm. I think it is a fun. Con uh, not connection joining of the two in stories like that, the Scooby-Doo and Batman uh, comic book series that just wrapped up. Was it earlier this year? Or did it wrap up last year? But it did. I mean, that one was a lot of fun too. So I, I think it just makes sense for, you know, hitting a different demographic of like, you know, of kids with Scooby, keep Scooby Doo going, keep Batman going. I think it, I think it works. Each version I've seen mm -hmm. of this um, ends up being a lot of fun. But then it's not, and de dealt with just like this episode. It's, it's not um, too kitty for adults either. I thought it's classic Scooby Doo with fun nods for like that you catch, that I would catch, that a lot of mm -hmm. other Batman fans would catch. And it gets actually pretty smart, also. It's not just yeah. Kitty Fair and like, okay, that's getting a little tough to get through. Yeah. I had forgotten um, how, <laughs> I don't know why I would say I forgot, but, you know, it kind of brought me back to my kid, how slapstick, how um, almost like the Three Stooges-esque Scooby-Doo was mm -hmm. especially Shaggy and Scooby, you know? Yeah. And I really liked, I like, I mean, I liked this episode because it was like we just mentioned, it was very much, 
it's structured. It's a, you know, very much like the original Scooby Doo. Where are you? You know, mm -hmm. you know, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Those you know, the help. Kids. Yeah. So the, the biggest one for me was the, um, almost feels like it's classic every Scooby Doo episode of. It's almost as if the shot is just static, but then you've got the bad guy chasing yes. Scooby, Shaggy, and Velma. Yeah. It's like in an, in one door, out the other door, and they're popping yeah. in close to the camera. And then it just goes ridiculous. And it's like going by chasing, going by chasing, going back, coming forward. And then they're like skiing. And then yeah. they're like driving something. And, and yeah. man bad in this is sitting in like a little cart behind it as they're just yeah. pulling him and shit like that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is it's not making fun of the Batman world at all. It's just no, having Batman fun with it. Yeah. That is, um, that's very three stooges. That, mm -hmm. that scene, you, you saw that bit in a lot of three stooges movies where there was a static camera and they're running there, you know, and yeah, doors are opening and I mean, you know, not stupid, silly stuff that, you know, it's really funny. Um, but Batman plays it as silly as Shaggy and Scooby are. And then you've got kind of, I guess, you know, even Fred Velma and uh, Daphne are classic versions of themselves. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not there for the comedy, but they're, you know, they're not serious like Batman is and Batman and this, I mean, they play Batman straight, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no there's no silliness. There's nothing. He's playing straight. So there's also a little bit, you know, even though I said it, it reminded me aesthetically of the Batman animated series. But of course, you got Kevin Conroy voicing Batman and Mark Hamill voicing the Joker. So there's a little bit of the Batman, the animated series in there as well. So much like the last episode of Batman animation where you and Javi talked about uh, Batman the Brave and the Bold episode. Mm -hmm. um, I think we ended up talking after that on the BOF social hour. And I told you, I always appreciate and enjoy fun voice castings. And I had no idea on this one because I just, I just watched it. And then of course, yeah. when Kevin Conroy's voice pops up. I'm like, okay, bravo. Yeah. And then it's, I think it's always, it's in your head. Oh, it's a Batman thing. Conroy's voicing. Is the Joker going to pop up? And is it going to be Mark Hamill? Yeah. And then the way that they reveal who's behind it all, and it's the Joker, and then sure enough, it's Mark Hamill. And, and that gets extra points for me mm -hmm. um, for uh, fun voice casting. And, and it totally just worked. Um, I guess the the plot of this, if, if people want to hear us say it, I mean, it... Alfred is Daphne's uncle who gets kidnapped by man bat. Yeah. <laughs> but then they cover their tracks. Yeah. And I, I didn't write it down. Scooby's like, uh, repeating how the connection is. And it's like your father's uncle twice removed polo player, not uncle. Got it. You know, something like that. It's like yeah. they cover their tracks and it's more of just, Oh, it was one of Daphne's, uh, Butler, but not Butler, but friendly polo fellow polo player, something to where it's just like, oh, okay, so this is an adult friend of your dad's, so you just kind of call them Uncle Alfred. Yes, that works. Yes, don't need to go yeah. too complicated with it. That's fine. <laughs> because at the beginning, when they don't show that, you know, they were going to make Daphne Alfred's niece or Alfred her uncle, whichever way you want to look at. It, I'm thinking, yeah. So. Is Daphne going to become Batgirl? <gasps> a la Batgirl. Batman, <laughs> a la Batman and Robin, nineteen ninety seven. So Let's me up, but, Uncle Alfred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're missing that that line, but that's a good way. I mean, it, we don't need to wrap our heads around an award winning dense plot. It's like, okay, we're in. That's why they're in Gotham. They're at Wayne Manor. Get run off the road by the Batmobile, which really quick it was like. Okay, I think that's the '66 Batmobile. Oh, it's yes, yes. And then we and get shots later, and it definitely is. It's definitely the '66 Batmobile. Lots of Batman '66 in there. You mm -hmm. got the the uh, Shakespeare mm -hmm. 
bust with the bat phone. Yeah, and the bat phone, and then did, did the you bat laugh? Hole is in there. Yeah. Did you laugh at that? Of Fred's like, "What's this do?" And Batman's behind, and the little battering sequence. Yeah. Every yeah. like bit that I chuckled. I think yes. that was my my favorite little one. Like, I didn't you know cry till tears came out, but I just yeah. I giggled. I did a nice little yeah. nice little giggle, and I'm like, I like that. That's fun. Yes. And then Batman finally went, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. Leave it alone. It's not yours. <laughs> I'll punch you in the face. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, so Batmobile, the Shakespeare, Batphone, Batpole. Then even after they leave Wayne Manor, the the mystery machine is parked right there at the road, the mm-hmm. roadblocks that's right outside of the Batcave. Mm-hmm. I think that's where it ended with the 60s nods but it's okay because that was enough and i thought like okay that's fun that's fun that's yeah fun. the location that they end up at was a uh, miller and frank department store yes pretty subtle yeah um and i don't know if i have if there's too many nods after that that i thought that i thought of right away um oh um Another part that made me that made me laugh was Scooby recounting his his Batman impressions or when he was doing mm-hmm. his Batman impression. I thought it was pretty great. Uh, I think the voice casting actually of the main of the main um, cast. They, I think, did a lot. I think they, I think they did the Scooby Brave and the Bold voices, too. So Frank Welker, I think he does a great job as. I think he's the one that sounds the most like the original Fred. He's or yeah, that sounds he's, like the original. Yeah. He's and, he's Fred and Scooby. Yeah. Uh great I did not I didn't know that. And I saw that in the credits and I went, hmm. Yeah. And then well done. Yeah. And um Matthew Lillard is Shaggy, who played Shaggy. Mm-hmm. Actually played him in live action. So yeah, when they did the the Scoob movie, they had somebody else uh, voice. I think it was Will Forte voice um, Shaggy, and it was very. I know Matthew Lillard was like, "What the hell, man? I've been doing Shaggy for like twenty years." Yeah. Um, and then it, I, I don't know. After that, they had him return to voice Shaggy. Um, I think he does a really good job. Uh, Greg Griffin mm-hmm. did the voice of Daphne, who actually. Um, Pete got to interview for BOF at the Batman mm-hmm. Ninja premiere. And then um, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Kate McCucci. Uh, she did Velma's voice. And so those are just kind of like mainstays with Scooby um, in recent memory, um, recent um, movies and TV show and stuff like that. They all have been doing the voice cast there. And I think that's pretty good. And then of course you add the addition of Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Um. Let's see what else they got. Oh, the the popping into Arkham Asylum. Yeah, I thought they could have gone a little bit further and done a couple more, you know, uh, background cameos because mm-hmm. they had Ventriloquist mm-hmm. and uh, Scarface and then Poison Ivy and then uh, Langstrom was in the third one. Mm-hmm. But also, that's fine. Didn't need a whole five minute um, popping up cameo. Yeah, it was mainly. Out part of the plot to see that well here's langstrom why why, how is he here and batman or bat man bat excuse me man bat is out there Mm -hmm. terrorizing so it served his purpose but yeah i mean just maybe a couple more did you feel like this the episode kept a good pace throughout Mm mm-hmm yeah, I don't think it, it lagged at all. Yeah. A- had enough to keep going, adding some and keeping Batman as in the shadows. Um, made it count when he was, you know, when he popped back up. Um. So yeah, I think I don't know. I I think it was a very sharp, tight twenty two mm-hmm. minutes that wasn't trying to. I think accomplished exactly what it set out. To set oh out yeah. To do. Uh, do you have like a favorite do you think uh, a favorite part 
Hmm. I'm thinking, as you can tell, you can see me, but people can't see me if they're listening. Um, Bill's got this pose. He's looking up in the corner while he's stroking his chin. Yeah, I think hmm. maybe since if it counts as a part, I did. I did enjoy the because it's at the. It's basically the begin at, at the beginning of the episode is the the little few quick nods to Batman sixty six. You know, mm-hmm. it was cool. Uh, it's so it's so tight of an episode, and it's you know it's only twenty two minutes, so <clears throat> kind of hard to say what part is <clears throat> um, a favorite because it's so short. But you know, maybe the sixty six nods, and I guess maybe the bit with the uh, and it's kind of part of the sixty six thing, the bit with the batarangs and Fred keep pushing the button and all that stuff. So yeah. Batarangs in the um, in the office, if you will, or the study. The study. There we go. That's that's definitely my favorite. With this um, fun approach, so I guess, what do you think that including Batman in a episode like this does for him in animation? Good question. Um... I definitely think it shows you how varied and the Batman it is and can be. I mean, you could take this version, this animated version of Batman and make you know, take out Scooby Doo and the gang and use this Batman and do a bat a 22 minute Batman episode that would be considered, you know dark and you could do go dark and serious you know what i mean yeah and then but you inject him into scooby-doo and it's never it's never it never comes off dumb or silly or i mean this you know this batman yeah. wouldn't be there he's but it's just i think it just shows how malleable oh it's the word i want to use malleable mm-hmm. um batman is couldn't do this. You couldn't, you know, you go back and look at that Scooby-Doo and Batman movie from the early 70s. And it's, I don't think it comes off as smart and as fun as, as this. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of, this is where Batman is today. He can show up in all sorts of mediums and incarnations, animation, live action, and it's, it all works. That makes it. If any of that makes sense, mm-hmm. I feel like malle- malleable has been a word that has come up a lot with him. Um, you know, the past few years, and I think it's because we've taken a second to measure the variations of of the character in mm-hmm. lighter fare, darker fare, a little bit in between. Brave and the Bold, and Batman the Animated Series that you can't say that one loves the character more than the other. I think both versions show that the creators behind it love the character. Mm -hmm. Um, And they never make fun of the character, but they have fun with the character. And I think this one definitely, this episode, and I know it's only 22 minutes, um, but he does. it's funny too, because the tone is like we said with the Scooby-Doo, where are you? original series but the it's it's very fun but batman doesn't change Mm -hmm. he's not off telling jokes uh trying to be all so funny or anything it just feels i mean even the battering scene it like it's funny or the you know in the study it's Mm -hmm. funny but you wouldn't say like i know but it's really out of character for batman yeah it just kind of it kind of fits and then uh you know a little bit lighter fare when He's in the Batmobile and Velma, you know, asked him about Bruce Wayne. You can see, you know, um, like the circles of the the white in the eyes go bigger. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, um, I don't know. Like it, it does. I. It's it's going to be funny if like we see this and then the next 
you know, episodic uh, animated Batman will probably be that Cape Crusader. And then to see like how that show will probably be complete opposite of what of what this mm-hmm. is. Yes. But yet we'll still be very respectful of the character and not make fun of the character. So I do just I love stuff like this. The the joining of Scooby Doo with him because I even sit there and I think of like, okay, what's the Hanna Barbera, you know, library? Batman and Flintstones. Like I don't think I'm interested. Never seen something like that. Mm-hmm. Batman and the Jetsons. I'm not really interested in seeing something like that. Johnny Quest. I don't think I'm really interested in that. Yogi Bear. I mean, no, I I, I don't see a mashup with him in any of those other characters. Is there something, is there a run that I'm missing that maybe you think would work? No, I was thinking. <laughs> I'm going back to my childhood thinking of all the different Saturday cartoons morning that cartoons. came on. Yeah. I don't think, you know, yeah, I don't think, I know it's not Hanna-Barbera, but can't see Batman with H.R. Puff and stuff. <laughs> or <laughs> or Sigmund and the Sea Monsters or Hong Kong Fooey. I don't know. Did he work with Hong Kong Fooey? I'm not totally familiar. I haven't watched much. That's just, you know. Maybe? I don't know. I think that I will say Batman, it seems whatever version of Batman you want to use in, in, in animation. Okay. You want to bring in, you know, um, the Adam West, Burt Ward from Batman and you know, mm-hmm. Return of the Cape Crusaders and do a Scooby-Doo with them. It works. That's kind of sort of what you get with Batman Brave and the Bold in yeah. Scooby-Doo um, a little bit. But... uh I will say that when you, it's just, I think with them being detectives, yeah, it kind of works really well with Batman because you can always do the mystery, you know? And the fact is, I I know it's a cartoon, but, and it's a talking dog. Yeah. But everything else left it grounded from that show too. It was, they just so happened to be in this house that, oh my gosh, it's haunted. And then at the end they find out, Nope, it was somebody hanging from the rafters in a in a sheet, and they used a projector. Yeah. You know, it's like you do that, Batman. Yeah, you can slide him right in. Mm-hmm. It works that way. I'm just curious. So, of, of yeah. your memory, what was that Saturday morning cartoon block like? Probably changed, but from what you can remember of what time? What time did it start? Because I mean, oh. I there mean, was some like, Saturday morning cartoons when I grew up, but it was not the block from the 60s and 70s. Oh, dude, it was, you know, and I'm talking central time, like mm-hmm. 7 a.m. to noon. You know, there was a solid four or five hour block of cartoons on all. And this is, you know, look, this was when there were three channels now. Yeah. You know, ABC, CBS and NBC, but all three of them had their cartoon block. Okay. And there was cartoons mixed in with some live action stuff. Um, you know, I mentioned like uh that's the Sid and Marty Croft stuff, you know, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, HR Puffin stuff and all that. Um Land of the Lost, all live action. Uh the Shaz- you know, Shazam, the TV series. Shazam. Saturday morning TV series with Captain Marvel. <laughs> uh Mr. Freeze. And Mr. You? Freeze, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to steal these diamonds, and Captain Marvel showed up. Purses. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, and then you had to pick and choose because there's no, there was no DVR, there was yeah. no VHS. No VHS. At that point, right? Yeah, you couldn't tape other stuff. So if you're missing out on Super, if you want to watch yeah. Super Friends, you may be missing out. On something on CBS or NBC, you know the stress and anxiety of kids yeah. at that time. You got to yes. choose one. You had to choose each. You know, every th- every half hour, you had to choose what you're going to watch. What channel was Scooby on? Scooby was uh, the CBS. Got it. Yeah. Um, Super Friends, ABC. Hmm. 
Yeah. I, right. you, you can see the look on my face. My, my mind is drifting back. Oh, yeah. Almost 50 years, 40 years, 50, 45, 50 of those days. When we're done here, I you're going to go was, pour a bowl yeah. of cereal and put on some cartoons? Sure. <laughs> it was, you know, just to be reminisce, I mean, it was like they would have primetime specials mm -hmm. like in August, late August, to to debut the new lineup of animate uh, Saturday morning programming. And it was a big deal to watch, you know, these cartoons, what's coming, you know, this fall. Mm -hmm. Those were fun times. Yeah. I bet the TNT had reruns of Scooby-Doo and mm -hmm. Jetsons and Flintstones. And they had Scooby-Doo on in the mornings. And I missed the school bus because I had to see who was unmasked on Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I was at the babysitters yeah. and I'm standing in the doorway right in front of the house at the tree. I can see it now. That's the bus stop. Everybody's standing there at the bus stop. So I'm like, okay, no bus. Look at the TV. Oh, I didn't, you know, Scooby got me every yeah. single time. I was always mind blown. I didn't know yeah. it was him. Oh. And then I turn to the right and look and everybody's gone. I'm like, uh oh. I had to go tell the babysitter, I missed the school bus. <laughs> I had to see who who it was on Scooby Doo. Um, was well, so, perfectly acceptable. Yeah, at that, right there. Yeah, yeah. But she was mad because she's the only adult, and there are a ton of kids still there at the house. That like, she's like I need, I, I can't just take you to school because there's a ton of kids here. But um, she got the neighbor to come over or something like that, and I got, I got a talking to on the way yeah. to school that day. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but I'm still here loving Scooby Doo. So yeah. Um uh, giving you final and final thoughts and words about this this episode of Scooby Doo and Guess Who? Uh it's okay, from a Scooby Doo perspective, it's classic, classic old school original Scooby Doo. Yeah. So if you like that, that's what you're gonna get. And you're gonna get Batman played pretty straight up. Which and it works. Mm -hmm. I don't think you. I don't think you could do a serious Scooby Doo in the gang. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you could. You can't bring. You can bring Batman into the world of Scooby Doo, but Scooby Doo and the gang has to stay the same. They can't. You can't. You can't do dark and serious Scooby Doo, in my opinion. And it's a good, cool little, you know. 22 minute um batman fun time i mean mm -hmm. it's not gonna you don't have to waste if you want to watch have you never seen if you're listening to this you haven't seen it try to find it on hbo max it's not going to you're not gonna waste your day by no. checking it out and it's, it's just of, another uh, yeah another addition another little cool animated addition to the world to world of batman uh, I'll co-sign with what you just said on HBO Max. I think it, they list it. It's the first episode mm -hmm. that pops up for Scooby Doo yes. and Guess Who. Um, it's like listed as like the thirteenth episode of season one on IMDb and stuff. But all that doesn't really matter. Uh, just go to HBO Max; easy to find. But yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a breeze of a twenty of twenty two minutes. It's fun. Uh, I don't see how you don't like the episode unless you're not a fan of Scooby Doo. I guess. Um, and yeah, as we just talked about, it proves again that Batman's very malleable. Um, and if the company is very selective in how they use Batman, um, I think that they they can tell that when it comes to him and Scooby Doo because this is right up there for me with the Brave and the Bold movie mm -hmm. of Scooby Doo. Because that one is longer, mm -hmm. like it's probably you could say it like that, that. There's more moments and funnier and stuff like that because it is an actual movie and this is just an episode. But I think yeah, uh, this is quality. This is quality entertainment with Batman and animation. It's 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 smartly written. Mm -hmm. You know, it's ridiculous, but it's supposed to be at times. Yeah. So it's well thought out, smart, ridiculous, ridiculousness. If that's a word, <laughs> um, 
<laughs> uh, I would say if you've been Lear, if you're a Batman fan and you're one of those, I like my Batman only dark and serious. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't, you know, and so that's why you haven't checked out that uh, Scooby-Doo Batman Brave and the Bold movie. Maybe dip your toes into this and get a little. There you go. Get a little, um, a little taste of what you get with a full blown movie and go in knowing it's go in knowing what you're going to get. You're going to get yeah. some straight up Scooby-Doo and you're going to get Batman. So if you like Batman, which you should, if you're Batman. listening, yes. if you're listening to this, mean you need to, Batman on film. Yeah, you don't have, you don't <laughs> have to like everything Batman just because you no. like Batman. But I think, you know, I always say, you know, at least give it a try. Expand your bat that thing yeah. you can. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. All right, Bill, before we, we head out, um do you want to plug anything? <laughs> uh just go look, go to Batman on film, Batman dash on dash film dot com, and there's a bunch of stuff about Batman. How about on that? that website? Wow. Uh, not just from me, but from Team BOF, including Ryan Lauer here, and um, so just sample the content. It's only been around for going on twenty five years, so that's it. Oh, so you're yeah. a rookie, rookie. Okay, yeah. All right, just now, I'm just now getting my feet wet and <laughs> starting to figure things out. <laughs> okay, well, good for you. Hang in there, champ. All right, yes, you're going to do some things. Yes, it's going to be all right. I will. Oh. Uh, they'll just mention that recently I have the, the most, uh, the review on BOF for the recent Batman issue, number 127, where Chip Zdarsky, the writer takes his swing at, um, Batman of Zero and R, which Bill and I have had a little conversation about, yeah, about that. And we did. And we, and, and actually the last episode of this show, as you mentioned, yeah, uh, was Batman Brave and the Bold, uh, Super Batman of Planet X featuring, the Batman of Zuran R, who is voiced by Kevin Conroy. There you go. It's all connected, Bill. It's oh my connected. Gosh. Yes. It's all connected. What the hell? What the hell's What's going it? on here? <laughs> you son of a bitch. Um, and you and Javi got me to watch that episode. I'd never mm-hmm. seen it before, and I liked it. It was good. I don't know how I feel about Batman of Zuran R, though, but we'll see. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, so that's a whole different conversation. We whole to different get conversation. Off that tangent, yeah. Yes. Um, coming up next um, on Batman Animation, I, you'll have to pay attention to the Twitter feed, in which announcer Rachel is going to take us out, and she's going to tell you where you can find that. So, uh, Bill, thanks for joining me today. Yeah. Reminiscing of Scooby Doo and Batman. Yep. And uh, pay attention to Batman on film, because I think Bill and I will keep talking on that podcast. That's. I'm uh, very likely. Very likely. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening to Batman Animation, a BatmanOnFilm.com podcast revisiting the animated TV and film adventures of the Caped Crusader. Follow Batman Animation on Twitter at Batman Animation. Follow BOF on Twitter at The Batman on Film. Follow Jet on Twitter at Batman on Film. For Jet and Team BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Batman on Film, authoritative, definitive, the original established in 1998. Football is back, and so is your chance to win with Bed River Sportsbook app. Featuring our new multi-game same-game parlay, combine the action of multiple same-game parlays in one bet for more action and bigger payouts. Bet the spread, bet the over, bet player props, and more. Throw in daily odds boost plus award-winning customer service, and it's a touchdown. Download it today. Must be 21 plus. Available in Pennsylvania only. Void where prohibited. Terms and conditions apply. Presented by Rivers Casino Pittsburgh. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER.